All right, so we are moving on to lesson 6EE4, and we are going to now determine if two or more expressions are equivalent. So previously we worked on how to manipulate expressions to create equivalent expressions, and now we're kind of taking that a step further and saying, okay, well, here's you know a couple of expressions. Find the ones that are equivalent. Find the ones that would give you the same value if you plugged in, you know, the same number for the variable. First and foremost, you have to remember those properties. So our commutative property, remember the word commute, tells us that we are moving from one, uh, moving something from one place to the other. So commutative property allows us to move our numbers around when we are adding or when we are multiplying. The distributive property, so now the distributive property allows me to distribute a number that is multiplying something inside of the parentheses. So if this were n plus 3, so since I am multiplying, because right here this means multiplication, the distributive property tells me that I can do 2 times n plus 2 times 3, and that's going to be the same thing as if I were to have 2 times the quantity n plus 3. All right, so the next we have the associative property. So remember, the associative property allows us to change our groups when we're adding or multiplying. Uh, associative has the word associate in it. So it's like saying 1 plus 2 plus 3. If we're putting 1 plus 2 in a group, that's going to give us the same thing as if we were to put 2 plus 3 in a group. Okay, so the next word, our next property is the identity property of multiplication. So this is a key fact here. So when it's multiplication, we know that that identity property, that number, is 1. So any number times 1 is going to stay the same. It's going to keep its identity. Now it's important to note that there's a difference between multiplication and addition because in the addition property, if I were to do 4 plus 1, that's going to give me 5. That does not keep the identity. 4 plus 0 is what's going to allow me to keep the identity of the 4. So the identity property of addition is what allows me to keep the identity the same. And then again, combining like terms. Keeping in mind like terms, they have to have the same variable and the same exponent. So now what that means is if I have 4x plus 3x squared plus 2x, 4x and 2x are like terms and I can combine them, I can add them, but I cannot add them to the 3x squared because it is not a like term. All right, so taking a look at these three expressions, the best way to go about doing this is looking at your most simplistic expression and working your way towards that expression. So in this case, it's going to be this one right here in the green, our 8 plus 12x. This one's fairly long. Why would I want to try to break this apart to see if I can get it to this? And this one, yes, it's fairly simple, but I can easily manipulate this to see if it's going to get me to 8 plus 12x. All right, so let's start with the simple one first. We have 4 times the quantity 3x plus 2. I know the distributive property allows me to distribute that multiplication to be 4 times 3x plus 4 times 2. When I do that multiplication, I have 4 times 3 is 12, so 12x plus 4 times 2 is 8. Now, when you're multiplying or dividing, you can multiply and divide unlike terms. So multiply and divide, really we're going to go with any terms, just for simplicity here. And then add and subtract have to be like terms. Okay, so for when we're starting out, this is really the general rule of thumb that you're going to go by. So here I have 12x plus 8. It doesn't look exactly like this one, but you have to remember the commutative property tells me that since I'm adding, I can change the order. So this is the same thing as 8 plus 12x, which is the same as up here. So I know that right now, and I'm going to make myself a little list, my equivalent expressions are... 8 plus 12x, so this one, 
and 4 times 3x plus 12. All right, let's try this next one. So first I'm going to use the distributive property to get rid of my parentheses. So I'm going to distribute the half to 6 and to 8. Now I know a lot of times we get scared because with uh, fractions we tend to freak out, but this would just be half times 6x plus half times 8 minus 2. Now remember, when you're taking half times a number, you're literally just asking, what's half of that number? So here I have 3x plus, well, half of 6 is 3, so 3x, plus half of 8 is 4 minus 2. I can combine 3x and 3x, and I can combine 4 and 2. I'm combining the x's using addition, so this would be 6x plus, this would be combined using subtraction, 4 minus 2 is 2. So here I cannot go any further and I notice that this is nowhere near what I have up here. So since this expression, 3x plus 1 half times the quantity 6x plus 8 minus 2, since this one is not equivalent to 8 plus 12x, then it also cannot be equivalent to 4 times 3x plus 2. Simply put, since pink is not equivalent to green, then pink cannot be equivalent to blue because of the fact that blue and green are equivalent. Mm -hmm. So this one is not equivalent to anything. Sorry. All right, so let's try the next one. If you want to go ahead and try this next one on your own and come back and take a look at your work, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, we are going to work through it. So now here, I don't have anything really in its most simplest form because even though these two are shorter, they still have to be distributed. So I'm going to distribute those first, and then I'm going to decide which ones are equivalent. Okay, so then here I'm just going to make a little list down at the bottom of which ones are equivalent. And I guess too I could circle them at the end, but you never know. Maybe, you know, purple and blue are going to be equivalent to one another and then so are yellow and green. You, you never know. Sometimes you have to make two lists because these two could be equivalent and then these two. Sometimes none of them will be equivalent. You just never know what's going to happen. So here, it looks like these two are the same, but what we have to notice is this has an N on the outside of it. So let's see how that impacts what we get. So here I have 17 times N plus 17 times 1. That's going to give me 17N plus 17. But then now here, not only am I distributing the 17, but I'm also distributing another N. So this would be 17N times n plus 17n times 1. So n times n is actually n squared. So 17n squared plus, well, the identity property here tells me that this is just going to stay as 17n. So notice these two expressions actually aren't equivalent to one another even though they look like their setup is fairly the same. All right, so then let's go ahead and pop over to blue here. First and foremost, we always want to break those parentheses. So let's go ahead and distribute out that 4. So I have 13n plus 20 plus, this would be 4 times n minus 4 times 3. It's going to work to 13n plus 20 plus 4n minus 12. So let's see what we can combine here. I've got 13n and 4n. Both have n's with no exponents or an exponent of 1. And then I have 20 and I have 12. Now, so you can kind of see a little bit better how this is working. I can switch these two because of the fact that it's addition right there. So I can make this 13n plus 4n plus 20 minus 12. So now I can see that these two can combine to make 17n. And then here I'm going to do 20 minus 12, and 20 minus 12 is 8. 
Right? So in this case, that's not going to work out for us. All right. So, so far, 17n plus 8. Right now, I don't have any expressions that are equivalent to one another. Last but not least, let's go ahead and try out the pinky purple. So I have 2n plus 3 fourths times 16n plus 3 fourths times 28 minus 11 plus 3n. All right, so 2n plus, well, when we do 3 fourths of 16, I can think of this a couple of ways. If I have 16, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 3 fourths of 16 is going to be 12. Or I can come down here and work out the math and do 3 fourths and I can multiply it by 16, and I can do so 3 times 16, so 3 times 16, 3 times 6 is 18, carry the 1, 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4, all over 4, and I still would get 12. Or even if I wanted to, I could use cross cancellation, so 3 fourths times 16 over 1, both of these are divisible by 4, equals 12 over 1, which still gives me 12. Any way you think about it, it's going to work out. If you're not really great with your fractions just yet, don't use this. Go ahead and use your multiplication of fractions off to the side. So this will become 12n plus, all right, let's do that again with the 3 fourths times 28. And I'm going to use cross cancellation here. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 28 divided by 4 is 7. And here I would get 21 over 1. So I get 21 minus 11 plus 3n. All right, well, I know I can combine these two. So I have 14n plus, and I can combine these two because these are like terms. They don't have any variables. So 21 minus 11 gives me 10 plus 3n. I know that I can still combine these two, so I have 17n plus 10. Huh, well look at that. I got super close on each one of these, but still none of them gave me an equivalent expression. So in this case, I have none that are equivalent to one another, and that's okay. I just have to make sure that I followed the correct steps and I followed the math to get to the correct answer.